Hey folks, how you doing? This is Wayne S. Pierce for American Liberty Radio Network. <clears throat> American Liberty Radio dot com. Hey, I just want to remind folks that if you're able to, if you're able to drop a buck in the kitty to help us keep the lights on around here and help me learn how to talk, <laughs> uh, you can do that. You can definitely do that. If you want to help out American Liberty Radio Network with a donation or whatever um, <clears throat> you got there, it is very vital that independent and alternative media stay strong. Because when you look at every uh, mainstream propaganda media out there, you're getting just a bunch of crap is what you're getting. I can't hold back anymore. You're getting lies. You're getting crap. You're getting just a bunch of, you know, spin everywhere, you know. Uh, so if you are so inclined to help in independent media out, Please do. American Liberty Radio would definitely uh, appreciate your help and your assistance in uh, staying on the air and also uh, doing what's right for the people. And that is sharing the truth one fact at a time without all the BS like the mainstream propagandist media does. So if you want to drop a dollar in the kitty to help us keep the lights on around here, please consider it. Or you can advertise on the network if you'd like. Go to AmericanLibertyRadio.com. Go to the sponsors page. Everything is right there. You don't, If you have any other questions, obviously you can email me, but everything you need to know is right there. Everything you, you, you know, want to know about advertising on the American Liberty Radio Network is right there. And also become a patron. There's a link there as well. Drop a buck in the kitty there. Folks, you guys rock because if it wasn't for you <clears throat> spreading the word, about American Liberty Radio Network, um, yeah, I don't think I'd, you know, have as many listeners as I do. So thank you, especially here in, in where I'm broadcasting from in Billings, Montana. You folks are the most patriotic, the most, the, I would even go as, as far as saying the strongest people here because you have a backbone that is just uncomparable to anybody else. I'll give you a prime example, California. Enough said. Anyway, a lot of people are leaving California because of all the dictatorial policies now that are, uh, I, I'll just say what it is. It's dictatorial decrees coming from Sacramento. That, that's just the bottom line. And if, if you are so inclined to understand what California is going through at this moment, you will see that there is a definite push to collapse California. Uh, I say that California is a communist state. It truly is. But within the next, well, if it keeps going the way that it keeps going at this point, California is going to look like Venezuela. And have you seen Venezuela lately? Uh, the mainstream propagandist media will tell you that Venezuela has collapsed, that people are out in the streets trying to find food and all this, that, and the other thing. Well, I don't know because I'm not there. I'm just seeing pictures on the Internet. I'm watching videos on YouTube. I'm seeing what's going on. Do I believe it? Oh, yeah. Remember uh, Oh, I, uh, Hugo Chavez? Yeah. Now you see why Venezuela is in the in the deep six, as they say. Um, so California is next in line to become Venezuela or have a system such as Venezuela. California is gone. California is no longer uh, a viable state. and uh, California is uh, completely collapsing under its own weight of corruption and uh, much like the rest of the country in some areas. But we have to stand strong for not only the rest of the United States, but for the citizens of California. We need to basically, we need to help them leave. Are they refugees? No, they're citizens of the United States of America. They're part of our families. They're, 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 they're 
human. They're citizens. They're patriots. They're, I, I can go on and on, but I think you get my point. If you want California to fall apart, if you want California to finally fail and close its borders to the rest of the United States of America, yeah, continue to ignore what's going on over there. Go ahead. Just continue to ignore it. Because if you continue to ignore it, it's going to get worse. You know, I wrote on my uh, Facebook page, I shared a uh, a uh, link. And let me go to Facebook and show you exactly and tell you exactly what it is. <clears throat> There's a meme put out by... Make California Great Again on Facebook. And it says, American citizens in California who are paying for everything are getting ripped off. Oh, and taxed out of being able to afford to live in our home state. We need America and America's first agenda here, like the rest of the uh, USA is getting the benefits from right now. We need to take California. We need to take back California. Hashtag make California great again. The meme says, has Governor Brown on there, and it's from um, <clears throat> conservative humor gone awry uh, Facebook.com. Uh, I W N R H camp. That's what it says. So it's there's a little thing down in the meme itself. That's where it's from, the the meme. And the meme says it has California uh, Governor Jerry Brown pointing his finger to his head, and it says, I passed a $52 billion hike in taxes to help pay for all of our sanctuary cities, and I called it a plan to fix our roads. Sheriff, you think I'm from another planet. And it's got the moon behind him. Moonbeam. That's what his nickname is. So I wrote, I shared that, and I wrote, Californians, you booted Gray Davis out of office for wanting to give driver's license to illegals, and then you voted in Arnold. Now you've got a dictator controlling everything. What the hell is wrong with you people? You are truly suffering from Stockholm Syndrome, and it's getting worse. Governor Brown must be stopped, but you people are uh, too gutless to do anything. And I mean that. I, I, Folks, I was born and raised in Stockton. California. Okay. I lived there for quite some time and finally got out in 2006 because, yeah, I had to. I saw the writing on the wall. I knew what was going on. (sighs) California is done. And people don't care. Okay? I don't give... I don't give one rip what people think about me personally. I never have. Because I know who I am. They don't walk in my shoes or know what I know. So anybody that criticizes me for anything that they don't understand is totally and absolutely wrong. Period. Done. So when I grew up in Stockton, California, and I began to study and research geopolitics from the time uh, Jimmy Carter was president, I found out a couple of things. First of all, California is is in huge, huge financial straits at this point. In 2017, by the way, it's the 17th of May, 2017. And I began to see, as the adage goes, cracks in the shield. I began to see what was going on. And I and, and Reagan tried to pull it all together when he was governor. And he tried to pull it all together when he was president. But it just wasn't working. Why? I'll tell you why. <clears throat> I can tell you why right now. Bohemian Grove. Bohemian Grove. Go check out the hit. Now, I I don't. 
It's not a conspiracy theory, folks. Bohemian Grove is a place where people go to get the blessings, the politicians get blessings from those people to go do other things. Okay? On the East Coast, it's the skull and bones, it's all of that, it's all the secret societies that help those upper elites get into political office and, and make the changes necessary to support the clandestine and, and almost secretive, because now it's coming out and has been coming out, of these organizations. That's on the East Coast. On the West Coast, it's Bohemian Grove. It's same same thing. It's just, you know, not in a big building like, you know, like over on the East Coast. But it's Bohemian Grove. Bohemian Grove, uh, President Nixon went there once and said it was the, pardon my French, goddamnedest gayest thing he ever saw. That's what President Nixon said. And other people have gone there too. Other investigators. Alex Jones and some of the people that uh, were on Conspiracy Theory went there. Some people who, while he had been there before too, he infiltrated the place with somebody that he knew from the inside. Couldn't do it now, of course, because he's too popular. But my point is, California... California's done. And I feel sorry for some people there who actually are patriots and feel that they need to do what they can to protect the rest of the citizens of the United States of America because I believe that their their passion is very valid, but their actions are going to be in vain because there are certain places in California, certain organizations that govern certain areas of California that won't allow any patriots to come against the system. Now, how do I know this? Folks, I was born and raised in Stockton, California, and been investigating and researching this stuff for well over 30 years. I know things. I know the secret places in California. I know certain places and people in California that have power over the governor, okay? This is not a conspiracy theory, folks. This is true and unadulterated fact. All right? Now, some people are going to say, well, you know, you you believe this, and, and so you're, yeah, get your psychological head out of your ass, okay? And I say that very distinctly because it, I believe that people who think that people who believe in conspiracy theories and all of that are, you know, mentally ill. We're not. I don't believe in conspiracy theories because, no, 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 no. It's all fact, folks. All of it, every last bit of it is fact. How do I know? Because I dig through the bull crap and I look for the truth and the facts and I put those together and I come up with the answers. It's real simple, folks. One plus one equals two. Okay, it, it, that's for the last 30 some odd years I've been doing this, I have found things out that have, well, at times you just have to retreat and regroup. You just have to go back and do some reconnaissance. And help yourself to the maps and to the information and to all of the statistics and data that is out there, and you'll see it. It's You're not a coward to retreat. You're a coward for not doing anything about it. If you fear what you don't understand, you become a coward. If you fear what you don't understand, you immediately put yourself in a position to where you not only are going to be vulnerable, but the enemy is going to use that against you. I know these things, folks. I know a lot more than what I'm letting on. 
I know the who, what, when, where, and how of what goes on in California. And I can tell you specifics, but I would rather be general. I would rather be vague in most cases. Because you folks need to go out and look it up yourself, Californians. I said it in my last podcast. You people need to, you know, the Patriots need to go to Sacramento and, and you know, rally around the, uh, the Capitol building and around the governor's mansion and tell him, you either stop this crazy train from derailing or we will make sure that your political career gets derailed immediately. And by the way, folks, that is very constitutional to do that. And that is very uh, lawful to do that. From what I could tell through investigating some laws. You did it before, Californians. As I said, Gray Davis was there and he was going to give illegals driver's licenses and people were all pissed off and they went no 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 so they went and forced the state of california to have an emergency election and they booted gray davis out of office because of it and now you have governor brown doing much worse and you californians don't have a freaking backbone to speak of to stand up to that dictatorial dick This is something that literally, you know, California, I would say, you know, I'm going to say it. California is my home, yes, but not now because I had to leave because I saw the writing on the wall. It's nothing I did. I just saw what was going on and I decided, you know what? I've had enough. Yeah, but I didn't go too far in 2006. I went to Reno, Nevada. Nevada is getting about the same as California and will suffer the same fate as California if Nevadans don't stand up. If you people in Nevada have any patriotism in your blood, you would force the federal government, and I say that from top down, you would force the federal government to go to the detention center that the political prisoners are in and immediately order that prison to release them. But see, Nevada Patriots, I honor you, but the rest of the citizens of Nevada have absolutely no backbone to speak of either. 25%, more than 25% of California population is illegal immigrants. Uh, Close to 25% of Nevada population is illegal immigrants. And mostly undocumented. Oh yeah, I know the specifics in that. But you guys have to go out and check that out yourself. There's political prisoners in Pahrump, in prison. That should not be there. And the judge and the system, the judges and the system are working against them to keep them in prison so that they cannot come out and voice and use their voice for the sake of freedom and liberty of the nation. Huh. Sounds like Another political prisoner from history in South Africa by the name of Nelson Mandela who spent years and years in prison because he was a poli- he was a he was a political prisoner but he was fighting for the freedom of his people he got out he became the leader and things got a little bit better but then again That's part of history. It's time we as Americans do what the Declaration of Independence tells us that we have the right and duty and responsibility to do. And if you don't know what that is, give me a sec. 
I'll go look it up and repeat it. In my past podcast, I've read this. And I'm going to read it again because it's very, very important to all of you. To all of you. And I'm going to read it from the beginning. I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm just going to read a couple of, I'm going to highlight a couple of the areas. In, in Congress, July 4th, 1776, the unanimous declaration of the 13 united, it's in small letter, U. The unanimous declaration of the, uni, uh, of the 13 united states of America. When in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and the laws of God entitle them. A decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. That whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it and to institute a new government laying its foundations on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. Prudence, indeed, will dictate that governments long established should not be changed for light and transient causes, and accordingly all experience hath shown that mankind are more disposed to suffer while evils are sufferable than to right themselves by abolishing the forms to which they are accustomed. But when a long train of abuses or usurpations pursuing invariably the same object invinces a design to reduce them under absolute despotism, it is their right, it is their duty to throw off such government and to provide new guards for their future security. Such has been the patient sufferance of these colonies, and such is now the necessity which constrains them to alter their former systems of government. The history of the present, and, and this goes on talking about the King of Britain, the history of the present King of Britain is a history of repeated injuries and usurpations, all having in direct object the establishment of an absolute tyranny over these states. To prove this, let facts be submitted to a candid world. I'm putting this on American Liberty Radio podcast for you guys to see. Because I guarantee to you that if people were to understand exactly what motivates people to fight for freedom and liberty, you wouldn't be sitting in your house long, would you? Protests are good, folks. Protests are good. Protests are, are, are fantastic. They They help identify certain things. They bring certain things out into the public. And you understand what they are. You see them. They're there. But then what happens? People get all, you know, well, I've been protesting for three or four days and I can't see anything happening and and I don't think anything's going to happen and so I got to go to work. I took days off to do this and I got to go to work. That's organic protesting, folks. And when I say organic, I'm talking about you and I and a few other people going out to the streets downtown and protesting certain things. That's organic. That's just happening now, boom, you do it, and there it is. But did you know? Did you know? And Rush Limbaugh talked about this yesterday. 
Did you know that there are paid protesters, paid protesters, folks, from organizations funded by the likes of George Soros? Did you know that? They get paid an hourly or a wage or a salary. They get health care. They get you name it. They go out and protest. You've seen that picture of that woman that was at at uh, uh, Sandy Hook and, and Aurora and all that. And then you see the couple that was there. And then you see the guy that was the father and uh, of, you know, what are, you see this, folks. It's propaganda. That's the media showing what is happening. But the people that are protesting are getting paid to be there. Okay? I don't know what else to tell you, folks. I really don't. I don't know how to bring to realization for you to understand what is going on. I I have no clue. I have no clue. But I do know this. This I do know as well. That the more that people understand what's going on, the better they will understand what they need to do to protect themselves from an out-of-control government whose sole purpose is to derail your life. This, 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 I am convinced of this, folks. I am convinced of this. You know, I look around and I see a lot of my friends uh, and, and a lot of my family members saying, oh, yeah, you know, you're one of those, and blah, blah, you're, you know, and they just don't know. I've got family in California. I got friends in California. They don't think there's any, well, other than my immediate family, they don't think there's anything wrong. They're upset. They're pissed off. They're, but they don't go, well, you know, that's just the way it is. I got to keep working because I got to keep a roof over my head. I got, I got to keep doing this because, you know, I got a mortgage to pay and, uh, excuse me, folks, let me take you back in history a little bit to around the War of Independence. Actually, let's go a little little further down the line than that. How about the Civil War, right? How about that? Let's go to 1860, Okay. Let's go to 1860, and let's ask your family members who were in the Civil War how that turned out for them. How was it that that your family members, whoever they are, if they owned a store in, in a mercantile, is what it was called, or a general store, or a bar, or a, you know whatever, or a ranch, you ask them. How it felt to have huge swaths of land that they owned be covered by Union or Confederate soldiers. Go ahead, ask them. Oh, wait, they're not here. You can't. But you can go back in history and look at this. Imagine for a moment you're out there working on your land and you see on the distance a bunch of Military soldiers coming onto your land. What's the first thing that goes through your mind, folks? What's the first thing that goes through your mind? I don't think it's, oh, let's sit down and have coffee. I got to go to break, folks. I'll be back. You don't go anywhere. I got more to talk about, and I'll share with you some news. I may go into overdrive because I spent the last half hour doing stuff, so or talking to you about things. And, you know, hey, 
So stick around. This is American Liberty Radio Network. American Liberty Radio. The lives of the mainstream media, tearing down the walls of misinformation. We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations. A new world order. Shattering the foundations of the new world order. To bring China into the creation of a new world order. The truth. The facts. No bullshit. In this new world, such dangerous currents have swept along faster than our efforts to contain them. And that is why we cannot afford to be divided. The American Liberty Radio Network. American Liberty Radio. In the councils of government, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. The potential for the disastrous rise of misplaced power exists and will persist. We must never let the weight of this combination endanger our liberties or democratic processes. For more information, go to AmericanLibertyRadio.com. Or email them at American Liberty Radio at USA.com. You know what you want. You want the truth. You want the facts. Without all the BS. American Liberty Radio Network. American Liberty Radio. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Distorted Reality. I am your host, Nick Tucker, and I welcome you to the broadcast. Distorted Reality with Nick Tucker. DistortedReality.podbean.com and Distorted Reality with Nick Tucker on American Liberty Radio Network. There's a show that's not afraid to ask the questions no one else will ask. Not afraid to say what no one else will say. Friday nights at 7 p.m. Listen to Restricted Airspace with Tina Marie. Where no topic is off limits. Conspiracy theories. Paranormal activities. Hoaxes. The unexplained. It's what we talk about. Question everything. Trust no one. Restricted Airspace with Tina, Tina Marie. Marie. Friday at 7 p.m. On the KCOR Digital Radio Network out of Las Vegas, Nevada. Hey, folks, how you doing? This is American Liberty Radio Network, American Liberty Radio Podcast, right here on the network on the 17th of May, 2017. How are you? Are you doing good? Are you... <laughs> Folks, you know, I don't get on, uh, you know, I don't, I don't like to spend a whole lot of time at all, you know, uh, ranting or describing certain things because I usually just give you the basics and say, hey, check this out. But you know what? In the last few days, I've been thinking about the importance of patriotism. And I've been thinking about the importance of standing up for what is right and what you believe. And guess what? I'm not holding back anymore. I'm not holding back anymore. Okay? If if I see something that somebody did and it was stupid, I'm going to say that was stupid. (laughs) Okay? I'm not going to hold back anymore, folks. And people over in other countries, I want to say this to you guys. I appreciate you as human beings. I, I, I really, you know, you're a human being. You're a human being. There is no reason why your government needs to control you or, or enslave you. You are a human being. I don't care what color you are. You're a human being. The same color blood runs through me as it does through you. It, it's, you're a human being. You want peace. You want freedom. You want liberty. You want security. You just, folks, over there, 
You just want to get up and be able to go to work, open up your shop, go to work for someone, take care of your family, protect your family as much as you can, and, and, and make a living and live in peace. You're a human being. But, but I also know you have guts. I also know that you have passion. I also know that you have the ability to stand up for yourself. Take a page out of the history of the United States of America when it came to the uh, Declaration of Independence and, 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 and the uh, you know, Constitution and the Bill of Rights and how all that came about and, and what these people went through to get that done. Now think about this, folks. Think about the and, and and I'm talking to the people overseas right now, over in other countries that listen to this show. Think about this. Your road that you live, your 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 street, your avenue, your your town, your neighborhood, your city was built upon innovation innovation and resources. Somebody was smart enough to help you build that city, but somebody came along and wanted, didn't want you to have the ability to be free or liberated. So ask yourself who that was and go after that with as much passion as you would taking care of your family because the protection of your family is paramount to anything else. The ability to look at your government and take your government down and replace it with people that are going to help you is most important. Because when you look at history, most countries had leaders that were part military or had military experience used the military to enslave the rest of the population. This is what has happened. This is happening all over the world, including China, Mexico, uh, other places as well. And it just so happens, well, not just so happens, but I've been looking at, at how liberated and free people are in places like Russia. I would love to sit down with President Vladimir Putin and ask him, Two very simple questions. Are you enslaving the population of Russia? And if he doesn't want to answer that, I'm okay with that. But the second question is, second question is really simple. In your heart of hearts, Mr. Putin, will you allow the people the citizens of Russia, to be as free as the citizens of America, of the United States? Would you rather see these people climb to the very peak of their existence through innovation and resources, or would you rather see them in the pits of hell? This is something that goes deep into the person's heart and soul. And I'm talking about everybody across the world in these third world countries that are torn apart by military intervention of their politicians and leaders in their countries. This is this the, the I've been thinking about this. I've put together these thoughts in the last few days to come up with this. There's nothing in this world stopping people from being the best that they can be, number one. Number two, there's nothing in this world stopping people from taking what is rightfully theirs and building upon the principles of peace, freedom, liberty, and making it secure. Those are the two things that are most available to people at this point. But we have a problem. And the problem is there's other people that don't want other, you know, want you to be as free or as liberated as you want to be living with the principles of peace, freedom, liberty, and security. They don't want that. The enemies of the people do not want you to live a free in a free society. And when I say the enemies of the people, I'm talking basically 
blanket statement against those people that don't want you to live a free and liberated life. They don't want to live under the principles of peace, freedom, liberty, and security. They don't want to live uh, giving you the opportunity to build upon your own life with your own business or your innovations or all of that. If you have an idea, uh, you know, for a, a new, you know, innovative, uh, 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 you know, instrument of technology, they want it. They don't want you to have it or make a profit from it. They want it. That's been that way for a hundred years or more, folks. So it's nothing new. That concept is nothing new. So anyway. I could go on and on and on and on and, and and just and say as much as I say but I'm I'm not going to because I want you folks to take it upon yourself to go out and look this stuff up to examine what's going on to pay attention to your neighbor to look at your work you know where you go to work or even your own business look at what you can do look at what you have done look at where you can go with what you know But always remember, there's going to be opposition to that. There's always going to be opposition and conflict against you and what you want. It's never going to change, folks. It's never going to change. You're always going to have someone saying, Oh, that's pretty cool invention you got there. And they steal the idea and make it their own. Hmm, can we say Tesla and Edison? Nikolai Tesla created free energy for everyone. The government came along and confiscated everything that he had and made him penniless and he died old and broke. And those innovations went to Thomas Edison, General Electric, I think it was. Yeah. And now look. We're paying high prices at the pump. We're paying high prices for powering our homes, for heating our homes, for everything else. Because someone came up with the idea of giving free energy to everyone, but the opposition said, oh, screw you. We want to make a profit off of it. That's exactly why this country is $20 trillion in debt. That's why this country, oh, let me add a few more zeros to that. With derivatives, money pulled out of their asses, just figures pulled out of the air. We're over three and a half quadrillion dollars in debt because of derivatives and everything else. That's just the United States of America, folks. Let me simplify derivatives for you. Put in your mind or on paper one plus one. What's that equal? I'm going to tell you. Equals two. Well, if you have a group on the left hand over here on the left side of the paper that says one plus one is two, you're good. You're, You're good. That's fine. Right there. Okay, you're good. But if you have a portion on the right side that has a jumble of numbers that just don't make any sense, there's no addition, subtraction, multiplication, uh, you know, anything over that. What you are doing is you're looking at this jumbled of numbers and going, I have to make sense of this. And so you pull one number out of there and say, well, if we need that, then we can add these numbers to, and, and you fix it, but it still doesn't. You know, you need more. Okay, you need more. And so you look at the other thing on the left-hand side, you say one plus one is two. Okay, you take that formula and you put it into this mishmash of numbers that you have. And you say, well, we need, we still need more. Let me add something to the right side of that column. 
you have somebody sitting across from you and they need several numbers to add up to make something right. So you give them certain numbers, but it just doesn't, it 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 takes away from what you're doing. And so you need to add, so out of your mind, you need to add numbers to what you're doing on the right side of this column to make this make sense. But the other person says, well, I need more because I just can't make sense of this. And, so, and, and you can't make sense of what you're doing. And here's what everyone is forgetting. Here's what everyone is forgetting. The left-hand side of the column. One plus one equals two. If all you have is two, that's all you work with. You don't need to add anything to that unless you want to. Unless you think that 1 plus 2 is 3, then you take one of the numbers. You don't add it to the, to the answer. You add it to the equation. 1 plus 1 is 2. 1 plus, three, 1 plus 1 is 2. 1 plus 2 is 3. 1 plus 3 is 4. You add it to the equation, not to the sum. But everybody on the right-hand side of the column is saying, "I gotta add, so, you know, I gotta put something at the end of this. I, I gotta, this has to make sense." But they don't look at the equation. They just want more and more and more and more. They don't look at the equation. They just want to add more to whatever is out there. So they pull numbers out of the air. They forget about the equation on the left-hand side. Derivatives are the numbers being pulled out of the air. Derivatives are the numbers being pulled out of people's heads. You ever played the game Monopoly? Yeah, there you go. That's the money that you use in Monopoly, the old old school Monopoly. That's the paper money that you use. That is derivatives. You think of it that way as well. Monopoly money, derivatives, that, that you just keep adding and adding. You got to buy more monop- old school Monopoly games to add more money to the thing. And yeah, you see what I mean? If not, go look up the word derivatives. Go examine what those are and how they relate. And what they do, what, what are derivatives? What are derivatives, folks? Let me go. Let me go look that up for you. Derivative. Derivative. Okay. Derivatives. Okay. Let me go to. Uh, uh, I went to Wikipedia. Let, let me go to dictionary.com and go look up the word derivatives and give you that definition of it. Derivatives. Oops. Derivative. Derivative. There we go. Spelt it wrong. <laughs> Here it is. The dictionary.com definition of derivative. Not original. Secondary. Something that has been derived. Also called derived from. Also, get this, also called differential quotient, especially British, differential coefficient, mathematics, okay? Result from, uh, this is derivative, it's an adjective, based on or making use of other sources, not original or primary, noun, a word derived from another word. Uh, that's what it said. Finance. This is a noun. The word derivative. Dictionary.com. Finance. A financial instrument, such as a futures contract or option, the price of which is largely determined by the commodity, currency, share price, interest rate, etc., to which it is linked. Basically, we have this today. We're going to need more tomorrow. So today we'll do this to make this tomorrow. Oh, wait. Our projections are wrong. We need more down the line to sustain 
what we are currently doing. We need to do this. You see what it is? Do, do, do you understand how that works? A financial instrument, such as a futures contract or option, the price of which is largely determined by commodity, currency, share price, interest rate, etc., to which it is linked. And there's a, an equation. I'm going to put this on American Liberty Radio podcast because you guys really need to see this. It's all fake, folks. The process is not fake, but the outcome of it the outcome of it think about that think about that for a minute imagine for a minute just imagine for a minute, just just hold hold <laughs> just hold on to that thought for a minute. Okay. <clears throat> just hold on to that thought for a minute because I want I'm I'm messaging someone right now, so hang on. Let me let me finish my thought before I get into this. Hold on to that thought for a minute. Money is pulled out or figures, imaginary figures are pulled out of the air. They're added to whatever it is that is being done at the moment. With the sole goal of changing the outcome down the line. But as time goes on, more figures are pulled out of the air to make whatever outcome you want stable you, you, you are are the gears rolling yet folks do you see where this is headed if we did not have derivatives or any formula thereof this country would not be in a 20 trillion dollar debt you see what i'm saying in other words, when you look at the bills passed through Congress that, that have, uh, you know, money attached to them for certain programs or policies or policy changes or whatever, or any type of earmarks, that's money that you make today. You go to work, you, you get a check, you see the, you know, taxes taken up. That money is going for future endeavors of the United States of America because of derivatives. That might be a general vague statement, but do the math. Oh, by the way, it's up on American Liberty Radio Network. The definition of derivatives, if you go to dictionary.com on that link, you will see a formula in math, and it will show you exactly what that is. I'm pretty proficient in math, and when I look at this formula, <laughs> it's like algebra to me. Also called differential coefficient, first derivative, the change of a function with respect to an infinitesimally small change in the independent variable, the limit of, and it goes on and on and on, the rate of change of one quantity with respect to another. Velocity is the derivative of distance with respect to time. There's a whole, if you math junkies out there, and if you, you know, n number crunchers out there know this formula, you, yeah, it's familiar to you. But those who don't, you'll look at that and go, it's all, you know, I, I, yeah, it's all Greek to me, right? <sighs> Folks, I, I, it's, today is, is, uh, Yeah, <laughs> today is one of those days. Today is one of those days. 
We look at things in life. We examine things in life. We examine what we do. And we, I'm going to use this word, manipulate our current situation for a better outcome. Now, I've said it before and I'll say it again. There's always going to be conflict. Somebody else is going to try to stop you from achieving that goal, whatever that goal is. You tend to, uh, what, what's that old adage? Uh, you make your bed, you sleep in it, right? That kind of thing. I always like to equate it with this. It's like you're walking down the street and you see a, a you know, a hole in the sidewalk. Well, you know, oh, there's a hole. You got to go around it. And so, and the more you start seeing all of these holes in the sidewalks, the harder it is for you to get to where you want to go, Right. This is exactly what's happening in life with the world today, with the political, in the political arena that we are currently in at this point, with the people trying, with people on one side of the, the political arena trying to impeach President Trump for what they are trying to, uh, oh, well, they're not trying, but they're throwing out this, this narrative that they want people to believe well it's all untrue it's all fake it's all derived from their delusional existence of what they think their world should be not our world not not the patriots like you and i their world they want Complete and total communism across the board, something worse than communism. They want complete and total control of everything, what you say, what you do, whether or not you you eat as much as you do. They want control of everything, including the security of your very own neighborhoods. Because in San Francisco and in other parts of, of America, of the United States, they have cameras everywhere in subway systems, in, in, in streets, in street signs, and all of that. They do. And I'm not being paranoid here. It is on record that they have this. They also have what's called pre-crime technology. Voice recognition, facial recognition, cameras everywhere. And go... I'll just leave it at this and then I'll take a break and I'll come back. What you think is a conspiracy theory is no longer a theory. It's complete and total fact because the opposition to peace, freedom, liberty, and security has opened a door to just let everything out and to tell us what's going on. And when they, they did it a little bit here in the last six months or eight months, and guess what? People are now seeing what is going on behind the curtain. They slammed the door shut last week with this thing with, with Comey and all that. But Pandora's box has been opened. The government has now admitted that they are doing these things. The government has always admitted they're doing these things, but people will not accept it because people fear what they don't understand. And why don't they understand it? Because they don't have the, the capability of learning more all people want to do is stay in their little tiny paradigm and be happy. And they don't want anyone to tell them anything about anything going on negatively in the world because they don't want it ruining their day. Well, folks, as long as Washington, D.C. is operating, your day is already ruined. Now, I spent an hour not sharing with you the news. And guess what? I'm going into overdrive, folks. I'm going into overdrive. I don't, I don't usually do that, but I will. So, <laughs> I will definitely do that, folks. So, I'll be back right after this. Don't, don't just, just, just sit there, just relax, enjoy, sip your coffee, eat your donuts, and, or whatever you're doing, and enjoy, and I'll be back right after this. This is American Liberty Radio Network, AmericanLibertyRadio.com.
You know what you want. You want the truth. You want the facts. Without all the BS. American Liberty Radio Network. AmericanLibertyRadio.com Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Distorted Reality. I am your host, Nick Tucker. And I welcome you to the broadcast. Distorted Reality with Nick Tucker. DistortedReality.podbean.com And Distorted Reality with Nick Tucker on American Liberty Radio Network. There's a show that's not afraid to ask questions no one else will ask. Not afraid to say what no one else will say. Friday nights at 7 p.m. Listen to Restricted Airspace with Tina Marie. Where no topic is off limits. Conspiracy theories. Paranormal activities. Hoaxes. The unexplained. It's what we talk about. Question everything. Trust no one. Restricted Airspace with Tina, Tina Marie. Marie. Friday at 7 p.m. On the KCOR Digital Radio Network out of Las Vegas, Nevada. Hello, everybody. This is Brian Lang with Live Truth Radio and TV. You're listening to Wayne S. Pierce with American Liberty Radio. Smashing through the lies of the mainstream media, tearing down the walls of misinformation. We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations. A new world order. Shattering the foundations of the new world order. To bring China into the creation of a new world order. The truth. The facts. No bullshit. In this new world, such dangerous currents have swept along faster than our efforts to contain them. And that is why we cannot afford to be divided. The American Liberty Radio Network. American Liberty Radio. In the councils of government, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. The potential for the disastrous rise of misplaced power exists and will persist. We must never let the weight of this combination endanger our liberties or democratic processes. For more information, go to AmericanLibertyRadio.com. Or email them at American Liberty Radio at USA.com. There is a storm on the horizon, a time of hardship and pain. This battle has been won, but the war against the machines rages on. Skynet's global network remains strong, but we will not quit until all of it is destroyed. This is John Connor. There is no fate but what we make. This is American Liberty Radio Network, the 17th of May, 2017. That music you heard is from Silent Partner, Fire Breather. Yeah, Silent Partner, Fire Breather. You can find them on YouTube. 
Go check them out. That's pretty cool. <laughs> so, welcome folks to American Liberty Radio Network Podcast. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I hope your day is going well. I know mine is. Hey, when you wake up, put your feet on the floor. You're doing good. <laughs> All right? Hey, welcome to another broadcast. And um, it is, I think, one of the, the most... Oh, I'll, I'll put it to you this way. It is, um, <clears throat> it's one of the weirdest <laughs> systems that we are currently witnessing at this point. Okay. And when I say that, I say that with this in mind, we are living in a broken system. You can look at California and see the broken system there, New York State, uh, Florida, many, many states that are now pushing for more socialistic, uh, communistic policies in their state. And we are living in some very destructive moments of our society. Jerome Corsi, 17th of May, 2017. Deep state mainstream media pushes coup d'etat against Trump. Elites want him impeached. Washington, D.C. This is from Jerome Corsi, Infowars.com. President Trump is the target of a coup d'etat being undertaken by the deep state. Intelligent agencies, intelligence agencies with a continuing commitment to the globalist new world order in conjunction with a corporate and government controlled mainstream media that believes Trump's surprise victory in November 2016 can be reversed by getting Trump impeached before the end of 2017. To achieve this goal, the deep state and the MSM, propagandist media, are employing classic techniques of propaganda and disinformation that were first utilized by Nazi Germany in the 1930s, only to be advanced and perfected by the Soviet Union during the Cold War. In a series of articles... Jerome Corsi says, I am going to explain how the propaganda and disinformation techniques operate, why they are effective, and how they must be combated. I'm putting that up on the American Liberty Radio podcast page. Okay? There's more to it than what I just read. I want you all to know that I am sick and tired of of the opposition, of anybody telling me that I'm a conspiracy theorist, that all, you know, there's two things that I'm going to start doing. One, I am not going to explain myself anymore. Why do you believe this? I'm not going to explain it. I'm not going to answer it. Why? Because I've spent my years, I've spent a good portion of my life, 32 years actually, to tell you the truth, searching and researching investigating geopolitical situations around the world from history to current moment today. And I've looked at politics, and I've looked at spirituality, and i looked at churches, and i looked at, you name it, I've looked at it, I've researched it, I investigated it. And I pushed myself to investigate and research geopolitics because it is it is the one thing it is the one thing that controls everything. Your churches wouldn't be 501c3 if it wasn't for the, uh, the uh, Rockefeller Foundation in cooperation with the Ford Foundation. I think it was the Ford Foundation. There might be another one in there. Your churches wouldn't be so powerful, number one being the Catholic Church, if it wasn't for government. And if it wasn't for the infiltration of government agents into your churches. Yeah, you don't think it happens? Folks, it happens. It's the same way it happened back in Nazi Germany. Everybody uses that as a yardstick for corruption, for spying, for espionage, for government corruption, because that's what happened. 
we put uh, the Russian leader back then and we put the German leader back then in place. Why? Because we wanted our, well, I don't say, I'm going to stop saying we. The federal government of uh, the United States of America and the British government of Europe wanted complete and total control over the areas to take advantage of their enemies. But it's kind of weird when you think of it that way, because when you, even when you break that down as I have, you'll see that both the United States military industrial complex and the European military industrial complex back then, the OSS, which later became the CIA and the MI5, I think it was back then, I'm not sure, the European intelligence groups, put these people in power and played them off of one another. Don't believe me? How about Prescott Bush being the manager of a manufacturing company in Germany just before the Sedition Act was signed into law by the President of the United States back then? Building tanks for German military. Prescott Bush being the grandfather of George H.W. and the father of George W. Tell me again our history is not screwed. Tell me again our history is not manipulated by the revisionists who say, oh, that never happened. That's just a conspiracy theory. Really? How about, how about opening the documents that have proven beyond a shadow of a doubt that this happened? And it still happens today, folks, the 17th of May, 2017. 9-11, Oklahoma City, uh, Aurora, Colorado, Columbine, uh, Newtown, you name it. Boston, you name it. It's all been staged by the federal government, period, end of sentence. I don't give a rip what you think happened you better open your eyes and look at the facts. That is why American Liberty Radio Network exists, sharing the truth one fact at a time, without all the BS. If you want to support independent media, you go, go ahead. American Liberty Radio Network appreciates the support. You share this show, I appreciate it. You're awesome. Thank you. But I'm going to try and fix some things in the studio here to where I can get, where I can take some calls. And I'm going to have Nick Tucker come on one day after I fix this soon. (laughs) And I'm going to have him explain to you exactly the ins and outs and the very workings behind the scenes. Because he's been doing the same type of research I have. And I guarantee you, I can bring other people on that will give you specifics, that will give you document numbers, that will give you policy numbers, that will give you, you know, House resolution and and Senate resolution numbers. I can give you all of that, folks. But the question is, are you actually going to look at it and accept it for what it is? I don't know. That's up to you. That's entirely up to you. I can't throw you on the ground and throw your hand up behind your head and say you're going to believe this because it's true. No. All I can do is encourage you to go out and look at it. Go out and check it out yourself. Go do what has to be done to figure this out. To protect yourself. To protect your family and your friends and your neighborhood. Paul Joseph Watson, the attempt to delegitimize and impeach Trump could lead to massive riots in American cities this summer. Impeachment of Trump could lead to mass riots, deep state behind chaos and collapse narrative. This is going up on American Liberty Radio. It's a video, so it's going up on American Liberty Radio podcast. You want to see chaos reign? You want to see 
complete and total destruction of the United States of America. Keep doing what you're doing and ignore the obvious. Go ahead. Keep it up. Supreme Court of the United States rejects voter ID, but real Jim Crow is war on drugs. Liberals really need to get their priorities straight. Because I gave that headline, I'm going to put that one up on American Liberty Radio Podcast. There's other things up there as well that I don't talk to. That I don't talk about. Because it's up there. Go check it out. Now, let me also give you this. We are not the only ones. The United States of America and its citizens are not the only ones suffering under globalist regimes. Muslim psychiatrist slams Islamicist leftist for downplaying horror of female genital, genital mutilation, accuses fellow Muslims of defending barbaric Islamic rituals. That's a Muslim psychiatrist. Is there such a thing? I'm sure there is. But she's going outside of the, you know, of the narrative that the Muslims want you to hear. Now, let me just side note here. Not all Muslims are bad. I'm just saying that. I, just because I know a few in Stockton, California, where I grew up. And <laughs> there's some really cool people. They are, as some of them are. The radicalized ones that are legalistically, and when I say that, I use that in air quotes, go look that up. Legally, uh, go look up legalist in religion. Okay, look that up at dictionary.com or someplace you want to look it up at. Legalist in religion, what that means in a religious setting. So some of these people are just so radical that they don't care. Okay? They just don't care. Front page mag says, Icelandic leftist poisons Islam critic Robert Spencer, a new phase in the left's campaign to demonize those whom it hates. Last Thursday, as uh, the front mag, a front page mag says, I gave a lecture on the jihad thread at the uh, Grand Hotel in Reykjavik, Iceland. Shortly thereafter, a young Icelandic leftist registered his disapproval of what I said by poisoning me. This is what the writer said. Let me go directly there and give you the direct link to that. I didn't say this. The writer, the author Robert Spencer, said this the 16th of May, 2017. It happened after the event when uh, my security chief, the organizers of the event, and a Jihad Watch writer, Christine Williams, who had also been invited to speak, went with me to a local restaurant to celebrate the success of the evening as as this crowded Reykjavik establishment. At this crowded Reykjavik establishment, I, as Robert Spencer says, I was quickly recognized, a young Icelander, called me by name, shook my hand, and said he was a big fan. Shortly after that, another citizen that of that famously genteel and courteous land also called me by name, shook my hand, and said, F you. We took that marvelous Icelandic greeting as a cue to leave, but the damage had already been done. About 15 minutes later, when I got back to the hotel room, I began to feel numbness in my face, hands, and feet. I began trembling and vomiting. My heart was racing dangerously. I spent the night in a Reykjavik hospital Reykjavik Hospital. And I'm going to move on and put that on American Liberty Radio podcast for all you guys to check out. This is what's happening, folks. Peace, freedom, and liberty and security around the world is now being upended and uh, uh, the attempt to stop it is being and getting quite deadly. French city on lockdown as armed cops open fire on knifemen. Suspect stabbed man to death. 
put that one up there as well. I'm just showing you all of the craziness around the world because these leftists, these these hardcore communists, the I mean, well, I don't want to say hardcore communists. These people who don't want you to have peace, freedom, liberty, and security in your country or live on the principles of peace, freedom, liberty, and security are trying to do away with anyone in opposition of their destructive ways. Socialism, any, any tyrannical uh, uh, form, any tyrannical brand that you can think of, these people want they are going to stop anyone from stopping them implementing it. In other words, folks, the short answer is the globalists want to kill you. And they're going to stop you from wanting peace, freedom, liberty, and security in your area. That's what they want, period. And this, I'm done. Trump will speak to Muslim leaders in Saudi Arabia about radical Islam. Trump leaves for his first foreign trip as president on Friday. I'll put that one up there. I'm putting all these up on American Liberty Radio Podcast for you guys to check out. I got a little side note, a little question for you, a side question here for you. Have you guys ever had a uh, Facebook page and you guys want to change it and make it different so you try to, or, or you go and delete your your page to recreate another page or something, uh, you know, and, and you delete your page but it doesn't go anywhere, it's not deleted? Yeah, I do that with American Liberty Radio Network. It's still on Facebook. I thought I deleted it. It's still there. <laughs> so I don't know why. Um, Russia calls a Washington Post report on Trump intel sharing utter nonsense. Well, yeah, that's true. It's utter nonsense. The narrative of the left is to really create division within people between you and I. And the more that you and I argue over stupid crap, over over just misinformation, the more we are distracted from what's really going on. That's what they want. It's a political sleight of hand, which they are very keen on using. China sets up FinTech Committee at Central Bank. China attempts more centralized control. Interesting. Infl- uh, inflation and mercantilism in America, five cases. Let me put both of those articles up there. China plays a big role in the United States of America, folks. They play a big uh, economic role in the United States of America. Actually, they own anywhere, I think it's upward now to 25% of our national debt. They own it. Okay. That's <laughs> they own it. Okay. I'm I'm that's I, that's the only word I can use. They own it. Okay. Inflation, I'm sorry, I'm silent, folks. Sometimes I just The information that I'm seeing just literally, literally, literally makes me not want to say anything because I'm still trying to process it, okay? I'm just still trying to wrap my mind around the insanity of what's going on in our world today. Murray Ann Rothbard, Mises.org, the 15th of May, 2017, Inflation and Mercantilism in America, Five Cases, the Mercantilist Drive drive tends to lead to statism if inflation is the health of the united states how in how and in what way has the government generated inflation in the united in the history of the united states that's a whole list of historical you know things uh, you know whatever just take a look at it it's on american liberty radio podcast facebook page it's not every day that we see the insanity brewing it's not every day that we see the pot being stirred it's not every day because most of it's hidden most of it's behind the scenes and so you and i suffer from the outcome of their insanity We take the brunt 
of their narcissistic narrative, their incoherent babblings of Washington, D.C., uh, case in point, Nancy Pelosi. We look at everything around the world and we go, you know what, how can we change all this? There's a lot. Chuck Schumer is a flying monkey that crawled out of Obama's globalist puppet. Schumer will do and say whatever the establishment wishes. That's going up on American Liberty Radio podcast. I don't know what else to 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 add to everything that's going on except to say that we need to pay attention to what is going on and make preparations for what could happen if we're not able to stop this insanity. Lawmaker, lawmakers ask Attorney General to take second look at Lerner's case, Lois Lerner. During her time at the IRS, Lerner reportedly targeted Tea Party groups. That's on Infowars.com under the government section. Go check that out. The media's Watergate fantasy covers Comey's dereliction of duty. Delusional left won't stop Watergate comparisons despite glaring differences. That's also on Infowars.com under the government section. Trey Gowdy says he's not the right person to lead the FBI. Congressman was considered the top candidate to replace Comey. WikiLeaks publishes documents showing how Google helped Al-Qaeda in Syria. Google provided a software tool which defections with which defections in Syria were to be tracked. There's a lot, folks. There's a lot. There's a lot happening. Let, let's go to <clears throat> let's go to Breitbart, shall we? Breitbart.com. But right now, I want to I want to add this. We know. Just by everyday living and going to work and talking to our co-workers or talking to our constituents or our friends or our our buddies in in college. We know what is going on. We know this. We know that this is, we know this. We know this. Problem is, is we don't want to accept it. And the only solution that we have is to ignore most of it well you see folks i don't ignore any of it i don't pass it off as some sort of you know misidentified ideology no i don't no 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 and neither should you it is important that we understand what is going on it is important that we see the very basic of what is there And we need to know what is behind the curtain and who's pushing the buttons and pulling the handles. We need to know this. That's just what we need to know. Folks, I'm going to take a little break here, a little three minute break. Don't, uh, three and a half minutes. Sorry. (laughs) I want to make it right. Got to take a little break here. Three and a half minutes. I shall return. Don't go anywhere. I got more coming up. I got a lot of lot shared on American Liberty Radio podcast. Go check that out as well during the break. Folks, this is American Liberty Radio Network sharing the truth one fact at a time without all the BS. Shattering the lies and the disinformation. This is the American Liberty Radio Network.
Broadcasting from FEMA Region 8. Sharing the truth one fact at a time. Without all the BS. This is the American Liberty Radio Network. The people of the world are now seeing what the globalists have always intended. They are engaged in a campaign to rid the world of 90% of humanity. They are well on their way of achieving this. But, with the corrupt mainstream media aligning themselves with such diabolical philosophies, the globalists are now being exposed and the people are now seeing them for who they truly are. Thanks for the most part to the independent media revealing the connection of the mainstream media to globalists like George Soros and others who invest and spread disinformation. Don't say you haven't been warned. Distorted Reality with Nick Tucker. Distortedreality.podbean.com And Distorted Reality with Nick Tucker on American Liberty Radio Network. Sharing the truth one fact at a time, without all the BS. American Liberty Radio Network. AmericanLibertyRadio.com There's a show that's not afraid to ask questions no one else will ask. Not afraid to say what no one else will say. Friday nights at 7 p.m. Listen to Restricted Airspace with Tina Marie. Where no topic is off limits. Conspiracy theories. Paranormal activities. Hoaxes. The unexplained. It's what we talk about. Question everything. Trust no one. Restricted Airspace with Tina Tina Marie. Marie. Friday at 7 p.m. On the KCOR Digital Radio Network out of Las Vegas, Nevada. Hey, folks, welcome back. This is American Liberty Radio Network, AmericanLibertyRadio.com. This is the 17th of May, 2017. How are you? Are you good? Are you? <laughs> I always like to say that because I really want to know. I really want to know. How are you, folks? Are you good? <laughs> um, lots going on. As I've said before, many, 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 many moons, many, many moons, I've told you everything is fine. In some cases, in some cases, things aren't fine. In some cases, things are totally bass backwards. okay? Breitbart.com. Yale Dean apologizes for calling people white trash and uneducated morons on Yelp. Well, he shouldn't have said it in the first place, dumbass. Mark Levin, Trump playing footsies with known terrorist Abbas. Well, no, he's not playing footsies per se, but I would say that he's trying to... President Trump's trying to see who's behind the curtain in that area. Radio talk show, this is from Tel Aviv, radio talk show star Mark Levin slammed President Trump for playing footsie with known terrorist Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud, Mahmoud, is it Mahmoud? Mahmoud, there we go, Mahmoud Abbas, Abbas, saying, quote, this is turning into Obama 2.0, unquote, that's what Mark Levin said. On his program on Monday, Levin also criticized Trump for seemingly being on the road to backtracking on his campaign promise to move the U.S. Embassy in Israel to Jerusalem. Quote, Why is the President of the United States playing footsies with Abbas, who is a known terrorist? Unquote, Levin asked. Quote, Abbas dresses nicely, he comes to the U.S., and he makes what people consider reasonable demands, and then... 
When he goes back, the PA continues to fund terrorism. They continue to encourage their children in elementary schools and even in preschool to become <clears throat> suicide bombers. I'm not even, this is what Mark Levin says, I'm not even talking about Hamas. I'm talking about Fatah, the moderates, unquote. Abbas, who Levin notes received his PhD for a thesis denying the Holocaust, is a, quote, gruesome, loathsome, genocidal maniac who is treated as if he's some kind of statesman, unquote. Trump met with Abbas. On May 3rd in Washington and is due to meet him again next week in Bethlehem during his visit to Israel. According to Levin, Trump, quote, may not be informed, unquote, and instead has been placing his trust in people like Secretary of State Rex Tillerson, a military bureaucrat, that's in quotes, H.R. McMasters, Trump's national security advisor, both of whom Levin argued are, quote, pushing the agenda, unquote, that a two-state solution is still possible. I'm just going to leave it right there and put the rest of this on American Liberty Radio podcast on Facebook. You can also catch me on gab.ai. Okay. Gab.ai. <clears throat> Let me go there. Yeah, that's another social media network with is uh from what I can tell so far is completely it's it's completely open to anyone with any thing to say anything <clears throat> excuse me i just want people to understand what's going on and that's why american liberty radio network exists Sharing the truth one fact at a time without all the BS. I'm not going to give you BS. Mama didn't raise no fool and grandma taught me better. You upfront, honest, truthful, factual. You don't like it? I think there's other programs on Spreaker or other networks that will cater to your more, to your, oh, let's just say your ideology. Jerry Brown in California says taxpayers are freeloaders. This is from Joel B. Pollock from Breitbart.com, 17th of May, 2017. Thank you, Joel. California Governor Jerry Brown referred to taxpayers as freeloaders last week for objecting to his new gas tax and car fee hikes. Quote, the freeloaders, I have had enough of them. They have a president that doesn't tell the truth and they're following suit, unquote, he said. Brown was speaking in Orange County, defending State Assembly newcomer Josh Newman, Democrat of Fullerton, who is facing a recall effort after voting for Brown's new transportation taxes in April. The new tax raises existing tax, gas taxes already among the highest in the nation by 12 cents per gallon. With higher taxes on diesel and slaps car owners with higher annual registration fees. Critics have pointed out that the burden of the tax falls mostly, or most heavily, on middle-class Californians. The Orange County Register, which covered Brown's remarks, adds that Brown is sparing no effort to keep Newman in office. Quote, he'll have whatever he needs, unquote. The Register quotes to Governor Singh. Kira Davis, commenting at Red State, remarks, the one million citizens in Los Angeles County alone who collect food stamps provided by taxpayers are not freeloaders. The millions of illegal immigrants being harbored in California sanctuary cities to the cost of taxpayers are not freeloaders. Illegal immigrants being provided free legal help by the state on the backs of the taxpayers are not freeloaders. The bloodsuckers in Sacramento legislature who get paid $178 a day in per diem funds on top of their bloated salaries just for walking in the door to to their job every day are not freeloaders. No, you, the burdened, law-abiding taxpayer, are the freeloader for simply asking the government of California to be more fiscally responsible with the money they already have instead of stealing more of your money without your consent to pay for programs that are already funded but have been rated for pet projects and personal enrichment. That's what Kira Davis at the Red State remarks. 
Brown's comments on taxpayers are not the first time he has shown intolerance to people struggling under California's tax and regulatory burdens. In 2014, commenting on Toyota's departure from California to Texas, uh, Governor Brown said, quote, we've got a few problems. We have lots of little burdens and regulations and taxes, but smart people figure out how to make it, unquote. Yeah. Can you say delusional ass? Because that's exactly what Jerry Brown is. Freaking delusional. Okay. I'm going to put that on American Liberty Radio podcast on Facebook as well. I don't know what else to say, folks, because as far as I am concerned, the burden of proof is in the facts. The burden of proof that you're all looking at and needing and and trying to understand is in the facts. If only you were to look at them. Okay? I can never understand, and this is just me. This is just me. This is just my perspective. I can never I, I can never understand why certain people, certain groups of people, certain individuals in those certain groups of people do not have the intellectual capacity to critically think beyond the box that they have been shoved into. That's just me. Okay? I don't understand this. So, somebody out there want to enlighten me a little bit? Because I have no clue what these people are thinking. If they are so inclined to love socialism or Marxism or communism or any brand of totalitarianism or any, any type of ideology of tyranny, why don't they pack their crap and leave the country and find a more suitable place to live? Why is it other people that come to this country who are leaving these tyrannical places and have a religion that basically is counter to any pseudo or... <clears throat> I shouldn't say pseudo, but any type of Judeo-Christian ethic or religious belief, they come to this country trying to tell our country, the United States of America, that we have to cater to them. No, they need to pack their crap and get the hell out too, including Muslims. As a matter of fact, I will go as far as saying, and again, this is only from my perspective, I will go as far as saying... The nation of Islam, headed up by Louis Farrakhan, need to pack their crap and get the hell out of the United States of America. Now, somebody may say, I don't care if you disagree with that type of religion. Under the First Amendment, they have a right to be here and worship how they wish. I applaud you. You actually did some homework. But when a religion, when a group of people, regardless of religion come to this country or are within our borders and is trying to tear down this country to make it a more communistic, totalitarian system. That is not only illegal, that is treasonous. And when the threats of war come from within our own borders against the patriots of this nation, that is an act of war. That is a declaration of war against our own people. Did we not have this same situation happen between 1860 and 1865? And even beyond that. I'm done with the stupidity of people. I'm done with the ignorance. I'm done with these people. Absolutely done with the opposition to those people or uh, the people that are in opposition to peace, freedom, liberty, and security for the United States of America. I'm done with them. That is why I said earlier, I don't and will not ever continue to explain myself. Why do you do this? I'm not, I'm not going to tell you. 
it's I'm done. You, you wouldn't accept it anyway. Your understanding of what goes on is based upon your perception of what is out there and what what is available to you and your capacity to interpret that is completely based on the education you've had. Yes, folks, that's a long way of saying there's some stupid people out there who really don't care. And they are in the midst of those people that don't want me or you or anybody else to have peace, freedom, liberty, and security in this nation. They're followers. They are going to follow other people and kiss their ass to try to get up the ladder in prestigious positions in corporations or in government or anything. And then they'll bring down the hammer because they were told to pull the rug out from underneath of you. So the taxpayers are burdened by those in, 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 in government with overregulation and, and you name it, fill in the blanks, folks. California is in, well, California is a cesspool of just complete filth. Complete and utter filth. It's a cesspool of just crap. California does not have the ability to stand on its own legs anymore. California is not the golden state. California is the crap state because it is it is a communistic state being continually pushed into the hole to enslave everyone around there to make Governor Brown king, dictator, whatever. So anybody want to fill in the blanks there, folks? Anybody want to enlighten me on where I'm, where I've overlooked something, if I have? Anybody want to take into consideration the things that I've said? Because as far as I'm concerned, folks, and I'll read this other article I got popped up here. As far as I'm concerned, folks, we've got, we've got a problem. We, meaning the patriots of the United States of America, and also about 80 80 to 85 percent of the law enforcement and military of the United States of America. We have a problem in this country, and and, and let me tell you exactly what that problem is. We have a government that is out of control, that is derailing us from ever achieving even more peace, freedom, liberty, and security for this nation because of the uh, over-regulatory policies that are in each state. Each region is overseen by certain people of the elites of the New World Order. And as much as we can understand, they are playing each of us off each other to distract us from exactly what's going on behind the curtain. Netanyahu, Trump visit will strengthen our great alliance. The Algeminer reports, this is from Breitbart, Jerusalem, thank you, 17th May 2017. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu welcomed new U.S. Ambassador David Friedman to the Jewish state on Tuesday at a meeting in Jerusalem. Friedman had arrived in Israel the previous day, pointedly making the Western Wall in the Israeli capital's old city his first stop. Quote, it's a pleasure to see you and to welcome you to Jerusalem, our eternal capital, unquote. Netanyahu said as he greeted Friedman, quote, I know you want to the I know you went to the Kotel, the Western Wall. It's deeply appreciated by our people, thank you, uh, people, unquote. This is what Netanyahu said. I'd love to go there. I really would. 
Quote, there was no other place to go, unquote, Friedman replied. Netanyahu told Friedman he was looking forward to President Donald Trump's upcoming visit to the Jewish state next week, which, is, which, in the words of the prime minister, would provide an opportunity to further strengthen our great alliance. It's a total contrast between Trump and Obama. Obama just pretty much dissed Netanyahu in every chance he got. I just, you know, my question is, is how is it people can't see the obvious? I can tell you two things why. First, nobody wants to. None of these people who are in conflict to the principles of peace, freedom, liberty, and security want to see anything other than what their narrative has, what they've been indoctrinated to believe through the narrative of the left. That's number one off the top of the list. They don't want to see any of this. They don't, they don't want to admit they're wrong. That's, that's the A side to that. The B side to that is they're never going to admit anything is wrong. Number two, the reason why things are happening is because of the fact that these, uh, I'm going to call the opposition what it is, the, the tyrannical people that want to tear down the United States of America, the, the, the leftists, the hardcore leftists in this country don't want you to have anything other than what they believe you should have. Huh? Have you seen a little short clip from, I believe it was the outer limits or twilight zone or something. It, it, the, the newer remake back in the eighties with uh, David Ogden Stiers. He was in it, you know, uh, he was also in mash. The short 20-minute, 23-minute clip called The Pedestrian. Go look that up on YouTube. The Pedestrian. It's a prelude to um, Ray Bradbury's Fahrenheit 451. It's a short story. Go check that out. Go check that out. It, it, you will see all sorts of things happening in that little short clip. It's 23 minutes long, I think. It's an episode. You'll see a lot of stuff going on in that, and you'll look around, and, and watching that, you'll look around now and go, my God, that's happening now. Go check it out. Two things. People don't want to see the problems. And number two, people don't want to do anything about it. That's, <clears throat> that's basically what people are doing now. The leftist wants to shut you down. The leftists want to uh, uh, pull the rug out from underneath you, make you fall. Then they'll say, oh, I have a solution to help you get up. Yeah, right. Problem, reaction, solution. The Hegelian dialectic. You might want to go check out Nikki Rapana. And I, I, I believe it's N-I-K-I. Nikki Rapana. And she talks about the communitarianism that is happening all over the world and all, all around the United States. And she looks into all of this and, and, and has investigated this. You might And the education side of this in the United States, you might want to go check out Charlotte Isserby. Isserby, is that how you pronounce it? She was the second in, in charge of the Department of Education under Ronald Reagan. She knows the indoctrination techniques that the leftists are using in your high schools and colleges. That's Charlotte Isserby. Go check that out. I don't know... When I'm going to get the problems in the studio fixed with trying to be able to take calls, but uh, soon I'm going to look into this. I got some things going on this week that I'm going to, uh, you know, take care of as well. But uh, I'm going to, I want to get Nick Tucker on the show if he can, if he's available. And we're going to go, we're going to take a two hour program and walk through who these people are behind the scenes what their goals are, and we're going to show you each and every step of the way, almost as much as we can in two hours, to show you where they've gone in the United States government in Washington, D.C., and what tactics they're using to indoctrinate you with their leftist ideologies. So as soon as I get the problems fixed, (laughs) I will have him on the show. So anyway, yeah, we're going to talk about that. It is not every day 
that we that we come to the realization that something is wrong because the hidden factors that are behind the scenes are pushed into the visual areas of society to make us believe that everything is just fine at certain times. Now, of course, let me just simplify that and say at some points you need conflict to know what positive solutions need to happen. Now, you know, th- this is true. You cannot have good without bad. Yes, you can. In its entirety, you can. In the whole of what is good, you can have that without having any negative thing going on. You can have that. It is very, very possible to do that. But how do you know what is bad when it doesn't align itself to what is good and ethical and moral? That's what you know. That, that's how you can recognize what is bad. But you cannot have the bad. You cannot recognize that if the bad isn't there, right? So the conflict is there. The conflict is real. The, con- the contentions of the leftist against what is right and moral and ethical of the United States of America is there. It is always going to be there. You're never going to get to the point where you can push it back enough to where you can breathe a little, regroup, and do all that. Now, I say that because look at what's happening right now. We're getting inundated with this leftist narrative all the time, all the time. Every day, we're getting inundated with this negative uh, leftist information. And they're pushing us against the wall to where we have no opportunity to take a break basically from it, regroup, reset, and plan our strategy in defense of what they do. That's what they're doing. They're overwhelming the system. Saul Alinsky, they're overwhelming the system to cause us to shut down. We can't do that, folks. We can't do that. We cannot shut down. We cannot... We, we we cannot afford to allow them to continue doing what they're doing. So it's going to take a huge amount of effort from us to stand on our own two feet and the feet of other patriots to take, to take the front lines in the defense of the United States of America. We can do this, folks. We can do this. We can can do this but how let's not be on the offensive and just go out and do it we can protest we can go out and hold signs and do all that that gets that gets the information into the media in some way shape or form and it gets the discussion going but don't go out and start you know, beating people up and turning cars over. That's just ridiculous. That's stupid. Don't do that. Defend yourself. Defend yourself against the tyranny, against the backlash of what's going on in Washington, D.C. Defend yourself. Push, 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 push. Some of you military personnel know what I'm talking about. I'm former military myself. Some of you know what I'm talking about. You got to push. You got to just, as Duke Nukem says, kick ass. Let's rock. Yeah. There you go. So continue on. American Liberty Radio Network is looking for your support. AmericanLibertyRadio.com. Go to the sponsors page. American Liberty Radio Network on Spreaker. Sharing the truth one fact at a time without all the BS. BS.